New Pandora Chapter 1 A New Beginning By Chief Demonic It has been nearly 17 years since the Vault Hunters had been on any real adventures. Willith had assumed command of the Crimson Raiders, with Mordecai and Brick as their top two men. Axton had become one of Willith's top soldiers, and became a two-star general after he led the assault on Opportunity. After two weeks of nearly constant fighting, the city had become theirs. This was twelve years ago, and had been renamed Crimson City. All of the other Vault Hunters had assumed roles within the Raiders, either teaching or improving the Raiders. Gage had joined the development and research team to help create new weapons for the Raiders and technological advancements to improve the quality of life. Salvador had become the lead instructor of Raider infantry, training and practically creating an army of Gunzerkers. Krieg had regained his sanity and molded himself into society. He was given the task of close combat training for the Raiders. Maya had become the head instructor for teaching the Raiders how to use elemental weapons. Zero was in charge of teaching the Raiders how to snipe. Pandora had achieved relative peace after all these years. Bandit clans still existed, but remained in their own secluded areas. Zero stood inside the close combat training arena with a wooden sword in his hand. His opponent was a teenage girl with long black hair that fell past her shoulders. She had blue eyes that matched the blue streak in her hair that went down the left side. She quickly brushed the hair that fell in her face out of the way and took a fighting stance. Ready, Angel? Zero questioned as he raised his wooden sword. Ready, Dad? She replied as she raised her wooden sword. She shot forward and the two clashed wooden blades with a loud crack. She slid her blade back and swung for his side, but he blocked it. She switched sides, but he blocked that swing too. Try not to alternate side swings, Zero advised. It makes your tactics obvious. You want to keep your opponent guessing. Angel shot back and replied, Right, don't repeat swings. Make unpredictable moves. Got it. She shot forward and swung for his side again. He was about to block it when she flew just behind him and struck him in the back. He stumbled forward and spun around to block another swing. She swung at him mercilessly, and he was starting to have trouble keeping up. He blocked one swing when he noticed she took a step that landed next to his foot. She kicked her foot to the side and tripped him, sending him to one knee. He looked up and was met with Angel's wooden blade at his throat. She was panting, and sweat started to drip from her. I... Win, she panted. She took her blade away from him, and he helped him to his feet. It seems that the student has finally surpassed the master. Zero chuckled as he placed his hand on his daughter's shoulder. Thanks, Dad, Angel replied. Can I get my own sword now? We'll see. You always say that. He patted her head and laughed. I know. Let's get showered and get out of here. Your mother's going to kill us for staying out so long. Angel laughed. Right. She'd be mad if we were even a minute late to the party. Zero headed for the male locker room and started to shower. Today was Angel's birthday, and his little girl was turning 17 today. He finished his shower and threw on his usual gray long sleeve shirt and black pants. He grabbed his gym bag and walked out to see that Angel was still in the women's locker room. He knocked on the door and called, Hurry up, Angel. We need to get going. She shouted from the inside. I just need another minute. Zero pulled down on his face and groaned. We'll be here another hour if you need another minute. He sat down at a bench and waited for his daughter. She finally walked out after ten minutes, wearing a nice blue shirt and black pants. Her hair was a little more fluffed than usual, and she was wearing makeup. Is that what you're wearing to the party? Angel questioned as she put a hand on her cocked hip. Yes. Zero answered as he stood up and shouldered his bag. Dad, it's a party. You can't just show up looking like you just left the gym. But we are leaving the gym. That isn't the point. We need to get you some better clothes. Angel, we're both going to get an earful from your mother as it is. We don't need her to kill us. 
Angel looked like she was about to say something, but just sighed. Fine. Zero patted the top of her head and laughed. One day, Angel, you'll learn that I'm always right. I'm a teenager, Dad. I think I'm always right. Yes, and someday you'll learn that you are not. Angel threw her hand up in the air and admitted defeat. Fine, you win. Let's go. Zero laughed as he patted his daughter's head. There you go. Now you're learning. The two walked out of the building and started making their way to the outskirts of Crimson City. The party was visible from the middle of the bridge, and Zero smiled to see how well it turned out. There was a large table with different foods and a large cake at the end. There was another table next to it with gifts on it. Angel ran over to meet her friends as Zero found his wife, Maya. She was talking with Axton as Zero wrapped his arms around her waist and kissed her cheek. Where have you two been? She snapped as she spun around. The party started a half an hour ago. Maya's hair was longer, just barely falling past her shoulders. She was wearing a light blue shirt with blue jeans as she scolded Zero for being late. Zero stood there and smiled as his wife yelled at him until she barked. Stop smiling when I'm yelling at you. It makes it harder to do so. Zero kissed her forehead and chuckled. Yes, dear. Maya smiled and questioned. So what took you two so long? Angel finally beat me. Really? Yep. Finally took all my lessons to put them to use. Zero put his arm around his wife as they turned to look at their daughter, who was talking with her friends from school. Our little girl is growing up. Maya choked a little. They'll do that to ya, Axton added. Zero shook Axton's hand and exclaimed, Glad you could make it. Wouldn't miss it. You know we're all family. I just want to know where Gage and... There they are. Zero looked to the bridge to see Gage with her hair down and a small boy that looked almost exactly like Axton, but with red hair. Gage was still in her jean jacket and work pants, splattered with grease and various lubricants. The boy was wearing a green shirt and blue jeans and carrying a long box under his arm. Where have you two been? Axton questioned as his wife hugged him. Me and Justin were just putting the finishing touches on Angel's gift. Gage replied. Justin put the long box on the gift table and went over to Angel, who seemed overjoyed to see him. This had better not be another robot companion that will turn against us. Zero grumbled. This is totally different, Gage proclaimed, and I fixed all the problems on BuddyBot. Zero rolled his eyes at the Mechromancer and asked, How is Justin's latest project going? Justin was a mechanical genius like his mother, and wanted to be a soldier like his father. Axton would tell Zero that he would find Justin working on all different projects to help with the military, but all of them would fail. He thinks he almost has it down, Axton answered. I don't really think that a person could support a plasma minigun on their shoulder while having a metal plate on their chest. Too much weight if you ask me. He'll figure it out. He's a smart kid. Smartass is more like it. Maya added. I wonder where he gets it from. All of them looked at Axton, who commented, Hilarious. They continued to talk until Gage pointed out, Hey, Krieg's here! They turned to see the former psycho walking with his wife. Patricia Tannis, and his son Patrick. Krieg was still built, but adapted to wearing a black shirt and no psycho mask. His face was scarred from all the tests Hyperion performed on him, and he was completely bald. Tannis remained the same, except she grew her hair out a little bit. Patrick looked like a perfect combination of the two. He stood almost as tall as his mother, and had her short brown hair. He was built like his father, and mainly stayed quiet. The Psycho family walked over to the group and greeted. Patrick went over to Angel while Krieg shook all of the guys' hands, and Tannis hugged the girls. Took you two long enough. Patricia decided that she had a few experiments to run before we got here. Krieg answered as he gestured to his wife. Scientific inquiry takes precedence over celebrations of one's birth, Tannis urged as she crossed her arms. Well, everyone made it, Maya proclaimed. Except Salvador. Where do you think he's at? Zero answered. Probably training some grunts at the moment. I'm sure he'll show up. After all, Angel's basically his niece. 
Since all of the Vault Hunters worked together, their children grew up together, basically making all of them family. Angel talked with her friends from school when she heard Justin greet. Happy birthday, Angel! She turned to see her little brother and cheered. You made it! She wrapped Justin in a hug and cheered. I'm so happy you made it! Justin was two years younger than she was and considered him a little brother since they practically grew up together. She put Justin down and questioned. How does the new project go? Justin smiled and answered. I think I might just have it down. The firing mechanism works. Great. And I was able to balance the entire thing out so it won't fail anymore. That's awesome! Have you shown your parents yet? I will once I know it works. She looked to her other friends who seemed like they were lost. Angel could understand if they were. Their parents didn't raise them for old Pandora life. Pandora was more civilized now without all the bandits and creatures trying to kill you ten steps from the city. Bandits lived in their own areas, and creatures generally avoided major areas. So Pandora was starting to become... livable. Don't worry if you don't get it, Angel chuckled. Just Vault Hunter stuff. The three other girls laughed at the idea of being a Vault Hunter, but that's what Angel wanted to do with her life. She wanted nothing more than to be like her parents to be a vault hunter. She knew that Justin wanted to be a soldier and Patrick wanted to be a scientist. But Angel just longed for the freedom and carefree life of a vault hunter. She was tapped on the shoulder and looked up to see Patrick's smiling face. Patrick, you made it too! Angel cheered as she hugged at her older brother. Patrick wordlessly patted her back as Angel let him go. He handed her a small book labeled Vaults, Remains of the Iridians. Angel's jaw hit the floor, and she stammered. But, 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 this isn't even supposed to be released yet. How, how did you... Patrick pointed to the book, and then pointed at his mother. You got her to get me a copy? This is amazing! Angel cheered as she hugged Patrick again. She went over to the table and set the book on it, overjoyed that she had a book on vaults. She looked over at the adults who were chatting it up with each other. Angel returned to her friends and continued to talk with them for a while. The party went on like a usual birthday party did. Cake and food, with all the usual singing. Angel thought the gifts were nice. Her friends got her some nice clothes and off-world music, which Angel enjoyed from time to time. Justin handed her his gift and commented, I think you'll like this. She opened it up to see the most glorious sniper rifle she had ever seen. It had the shape of a Malawan E-Tech sniper, but without the wings, and had a black and blue paint job. She picked it up and proclaimed, She's beautiful! Who made this? Justin proclaimed with pride. Me and Mom did. It's a pulse sniper with rechargeable clip, good for 60 shots, before needing to recharge. This is completely and utterly awesome! Let's try it out! Angel grabbed the standard military-grade magazine and put it in the bottom of the rifle. She looked through the scope and put the sights on a rock about a mile away. She used what her dad taught her about sniping and slowed her breathing. She gave the trigger a slow squeeze and the recoil nearly threw Angel off her feet. It has quite a kick to it, Justin laughed. Angel put it on the table and cheered, Thank you so much! She felt a hand on her shoulder and turned to see Dad handing her a small box. Last one, he proclaimed as she took it from him. She opened it up to find a black stick about a foot long. Her eyes widened as everyone questioned what it was. A digestructing katana like her father's. She squealed almost at the top of her lungs. I can't believe it! My own katana! Thank you so much, Dad! She wrapped her arms around her father and repeated, Thank you, thank you, thank you! He laughed and responded, Why don't you give it a few swings? She let him go and grabbed the cold metal of her new weapon. She grasped the other end and separated the two pieces, digestructing a white blade as her father's was blue. She gazed at the beautiful blade with her mouth open, amazed that she finally had one of her own. This is my tool, she thought as she gave the blade a few swings. My tool to become a vault hunter.